What's up guys, Brad here from Piney Grove. And what you see going on in the background is something we've been waiting for for six months. We finally got the concrete crew guys here. They've been wildly busy building up here in North Florida. We finally got them here on site. We're gonna be adding to the pole barn and apron here. We're also gonna do a patio on the house in the background and also a couple of other little concrete pieces that we'll show you as we go. So here's the view coming out of the pole barn. And what we found is after a rain, it would be hard to bring the tractor up here because that clay that we dug from the pond back there would get slippery. That's why we're pouring this pad to make it easier to get in and out of the pole barn, not only now, but when we have animals in the future. So this is hard packed clay from the pond and the guys are having a little bit of trouble digging it to get the depth, but they said it's packed really well and we shouldn't have any problems with the concrete cracking afterwards. All right, guys, exciting day here. We got concrete's gonna be coming in later. And they're waving because the concrete truck just missed the driveway. We got a 12 by 24 patio that we're doing on back of the house. So we're gonna go from the double sliding doors to the other entry door. This truck has six yards in it. We think the whole pour is gonna be around 10 yards. And even though a truck can hold 10 yards, they elected to send it in two trucks. I'm not a concrete expert. That's why I got these guys here. Thought we were just gonna do a straight concrete pour because I believe it's fiber reinforced concrete, but it uh, looks like around the footer edge, he's gonna put in some rebar. They put the mud there that they lift up the wire so the wire doesn't sit on the plastic. The wire actually comes up into the mud or the concrete. He's been adding water to the concrete. It was a little dry when it first came out. So he's been adding water and spinning the drum and you see the consistency when it comes out. Patio is poured, now we're gonna pour this front apron on the house. It's a ramp that goes right down to the dirt level. And I think it's six by 12, maybe six by 14. We use red clay fill dirt in here and there's a video out on that. We'll post the link up here. And we got this graded pretty well, but because of the way the water runs off this roof, it kind of washes this out. So we put in these basins and of course there's a video on that as well. But once this is poured, we'll put in some sod here and that should solidify this grade so it doesn't wash out anymore. And oh, by the way, if you're liking the video so far, please click that like button. It sure help our channel. They just checked the concrete level on the truck. There's about two and a half yards left. They figure that should be plenty to do this ramp right here. And then we'll get a different truck for the ramp to the actual pole barn, the big ramp. Because this is poured on a slope, Otis had him turn the drum, and by turning the drum, that dries out the concrete, and then the concrete will stick better on the slope. If it was poured as wet as the patio on the back, gravity would just pull it all down. They're pouring the little four by five in front of the shed door. He's up there getting every last bit he can get. He said every rock counts. We're not gonna have quite enough for that four by five. I mean, we're gonna come in just woefully, pitifully short. But uh, we got another truck coming. Total pour is gonna be around 12 yards. So we could not have gotten everything all in one truck, even if we wanted to. I told him clean out the truck in this culvert of the pond because that's just old concrete sidewalk and stuff we put in there to keep that from washing out. And this concrete will actually seal in between there so that it won't wash through the concrete and it'll just go through that culvert, through the broke up sidewalks into the pond and I'll have less erosion and less dirty water going into the pond. We've got the second concrete truck here and he should have six yards or so. With six yards to do the three pieces for the house and then this right here is six yards itself. So this is the second time we've used Corbin concrete and I just really like the way that he goes about doing his business. He obviously forms it up real well. He uses those barriers that actually keep your concrete from cracking, but he just does a good job and he's very conscious about his work site and he wants to give you a good product. So if you're in the North Florida area, look up Corbin Concrete. Why do we only pour a little amount here instead of just going ahead and dumping it all? 
it's a little stiff. We like to see the concrete first. That way we can get a good look at it before we add water to it. It's better to pour this stiff on a fallen ramp because the concrete will just fall down the hill if you wet it up too much. So we'll see what they got in the chute and then we'll add to it. We'll add water to it. What they're doing now is they're screeding and then the third guy fills in any gaps where it might be low, like right here. I kind of want to get in there and do a little bit of that. We like to do it yourself out here a lot at Piney Grove. We just don't have a lot of time. I don't have the skills and the tools for that. So that's why we hire good companies like Corbin to do that type of work. So the truck driver just said, cross your fingers because we just got what we think is enough concrete for here, but we still have a little bit left to do on the four by five pad, which is on the other side of the pole barn. We're not gonna have any extra concrete and we're hoping we don't come in a little short. He's gonna put in a little bit more right there. And let me show you what we need to be left in the bottom of that truck. We might be in there scraping with some spatulas or something to get enough to finish this pour. We've got some concrete there in the base, but we need, we need a couple wheelbarrow fulls to finish that out. I know it's gonna turn out okay, but I'm a little nervous right now because you can't have a whole truck come back just for what we showed you earlier. All right, he says he's got enough in the truck. We're coming around the side here to finish up this little pad. I just told Paul behind me, it's a fine line between hero and zero right here. Let's see if we have enough. Here comes the mud. We think if we can scrape out his little uh, chute here, we'll have enough. All right, Paul's gonna get every rock he can out of there. Mud dog lock. <laughs> we are literally counting stones. They just said, hey, there's one more stone up there. Get that one. It's gonna be so close. I'm gonna come in tight and you can see the fiber. The concrete truck didn't come with enough water to rinse out. Actually, it didn't have any extra water in it. So we're gonna go fill him up with water so he can rinse out his truck and we can rinse off these tools. We filled the mixer truck with water. So now he's got water on board, filled his tank completely. Now they're bringing a wheelbarrow up here and try and catch any mud that he'll get out during his cleanup. He found hey. some more mud in there. That just might do it. It just keeps coming. We're all telling Paul, don't spill it. Yeah. They're gonna look like geniuses because this might work out absolutely perfect. Okay, so what we're doing here is we're making sure the edge is good and sealed up, um, up underneath this, this edge right here. You can walk up here and do it, but it's just harder to get your footprints out. So it's just better to use the skids. So we're just making sure that this is really sealed and looks good. We're on the tail end of this job, finishing it up looking really really good we put in some eye hooks or eye bolts so the bungee will go in there and that'll be used to hold down gas grills and a smoker and stuff just so the wind don't blow them away so this is the tool that they use to get the finish on there the trowel on a long handle it's three foot wide and in just a couple minutes otis can go across here and get a trowel finish It's kind of shaded up here at the front of the house, but he's got this one done as well. Got a nice broom finish and the finish actually goes perpendicular, I guess, to the slab so that uh, there'll be no slipping coming down. On the ramp coming up to the pole barn, he's finishing that off now, finishing it with the Fresno float. You see he's going crossways across the grain, getting that finalized, and then this job will be done. Did gravity pull it that way? So you can see where we containerized this so that gravity doesn't pull it too much that way. But because there was a little bit of, I guess, wetness to the slump of the mud, you'll see on the back side of one of the cavities, the concrete's actually pulled away. So as the concrete dries, he'll pull that concrete back up and fill in that gap. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and close out this video. I'll give you some final shots of this when it's done. But a big shout out to Corbin's Concrete. We got Otis, we got Billy, and we got Paul here. If you like today's video, please click that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and share with your friends. Otherwise, we'll catch you on the next one. Take care, y'all. Look what we have here. We have a patio. That way we're not tracking in mud when we go to and from mom and dad's house. Yay. Speaking of walking up to mom and dad's house, we now have a walkway so we don't track in mud and we don't have to walk over a pallet. Do you see the theme here? You see the theme? 
we now have more concrete. Again, going in and out of pop shop. Easier, less tripping hazards, less dirt. Maiden tractor voyage on the ramp. First time, anything on the new ramp? Life short, tractor hard. Oh goodness, life short, tractor hard.